Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm continuing my declutter series and going through all of my foundations. Now this drawer used to be full. I did declutter it once before I started my channel because I used to have also this part totally full of foundations. Now it's got like my big um, setting sprays and a couple of primers that don't fit in my primer drawer. Now ideally I would like to cut down my foundations to kind of fit like in this area right here. I'm not sure if I can do that because a decent amount of the drugstore ones that I like, I have to mix two shades together just to get my shade. Um, but before we jump into it, let me just show you the foundations that I'm definitely keeping. The ones that are actually in my everyday makeup drawer right up here. So up here I have, I have the new NARS foundation. This is the shade Punjab, the lightest medium shade. If my first impression of this is already up, I'll go ahead and throw it in the cards, but I have been liking this foundation, and right now, I can use this on its own, and it's a good color match for me, so I am holding on to this one. Two foundations that I've been really like mixing have been the Fenty Beauty Foundation and the Makeup Forever Ultra HD. In the Fenty Beauty, I am shade 160, and in the Makeup Forever, I am in Y245. This is currently my favorite foundation like cocktail because it lasts throughout the day and it just looks beautiful on the skin. It looks like my skin and these two shades together mixed make like my perfect shade. So I am liking these two. I'm about halfway through the Fenty and the Makeup Forever I kind of just started. So I'm hoping to use these two together until the Fenty runs out. Because honestly the Fenty by itself doesn't look the best upon my skin. Okay, the next one I have is the Cover Effects Custom Cover Drops. I have the shade G20. If you haven't seen my last Ulta haul, that's where I picked this up. And I just got it, so I'm going to go ahead and hold on to this so I can mix it in with a couple of other foundations. The last one up here is my Marc Jacobs Remarkable. God, it's so messy. That's the one thing. I hate how, like, dirty it gets. But I have the Marc Jacobs Remarkable, and I have the shade 14 Ivory Medium. This I've just been using to like dot around any trouble spots that I have that aren't covered up by the other foundations that I've been using. So mainly I've been dotting it around to kind of spot conceal like on my chin and on my forehead right above my eyebrow where I've been having a couple of problem areas. Okay, so since those are in my everyday makeup drawer, they stay up here and I'm definitely holding on to them. So... Let's dig into the actual foundation drawer. One that I definitely want to get rid of is the L'Oreal True Match Lumi. This was one of the first foundations that I ever purchased, and the shade is just really off. I thought about mixing it with a couple of other things, but it's the color C3, which is a cool undertone, and no matter what I mix it with, it still looks off. So I'm gonna go ahead and let go of the True Match Lumi. Next, another foundation I was really underwhelmed by is the MAC Next to Nothing Face Color. Now, I did try to return this foundation, but since I bought it online, returning it back through the online, like, I had to email customer service, and it was this whole, like, they made it so hard to return the product that I I just held on to it. It, w it wasn't worth the trouble of returning it for the 30 something dollars, even though it was 30 something dollars. And I've tried this with other powders, I've tried this mixed in with other products, and I'm just not a fan. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and bite the bullet and just declutter it, because just looking at it just like makes me frustrated. <laughs> and if you haven't seen my first impression and wear test of this, I'll go ahead and throw it up in the cards. Another one that I'm going to go ahead and declutter is the Revlon Photo Ready Airbrush Effect Foundation. I tried this out a couple of times and I just really wasn't wowed by it. The shade is just a little bit off. It creases like crazy in like my smile lines and by the um by like the creases of my nose. And honestly, it wasn't worth the price. This is almost like $15. It's honestly completely underwhelming, so I'm going to go ahead and declutter it. Next, I have the LA Girl Pro Coverage HD Foundation. This one, I think, is pretty okay. It's not the best foundation I've ever used. It's not the worst foundation. I have the shade Fair, and I can, like, it's usable on its own. Like, it doesn't completely break down and make me look like a hot mess when I'm using it on its own, but it's not my favorite to use. But I think it is a great drugstore alternative, 
and I do want to try out more from the LA Girl brand. They just came to my local CVS, which I honestly hate my local drugstores. They take forever to get new products and they're never well stocked, so I end up buying a lot of stuff online. But I was really happy to see LA Girl come into my local CVS. So I do want to try out more from the brand and the foundation is a pretty good one, so I'm going to hold on to this and try it out some more. Okay, next this is a bit excessive, but I do have three shades of the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. One thing with drugstore foundations, it's so hard to find your shade. I was shopping online, I was trying to shop in store, I had to go to like three different CVS's in my area just to find a store that actually sold this. And even then, they didn't have all the shades, so I bought a shade that was way too light for me first, and then I bought Cream Beige, which is this one in the middle. It's way too dark and way too warm for me, so my perfect shade when I actually first tried this out, which was like in uh, August, September, is Bronze Beige. So this is my closest shade match, and then Buff Bisque is for when I'm a little bit lighter. So Cream Beige, I'm not really holding on to for any reason, it's not my shade, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of it. But I will hold on to these two shades because this is me like in like late summer when I'm a little bit darker and this is me now when I'm a little bit lighter and if I have to I can always mix these two together but for $5.99 you really can't beat it. It is a great foundation. The only issue I have with it is that it will crease along my smile lines but if I add a little bit of foundation there and then bake it, it really isn't a problem anymore. So I do love these so I'm going to go ahead and hold on to these two. Next, I have the Too Faced Born This Way foundation. This was the very first, like, high-end foundation that I ever bought. It was the first time I'd ever spent more than, like, $30 on a foundation. And the shade is off. I have the shade Vanilla, and it's yellow. Like, it's plain yellow. Even for me, who has strong yellow undertones, or golden undertones, I can't wear this. Even mixing it in with other things, the, the yellow just comes across too much. And honestly, I'm only holding on to this because it's the first foundation I ever bought and I threw away the box and stuff before I realized it was the wrong shade. So I just need to go ahead and get rid of this because I'm not using it and I can't mix it to make it work for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this one. Another foundation from Too Faced is the Peach Perfect Comfort Matte Foundation. I absolutely love this foundation. This shade is in Warm Nude. Right now it's a little dark for me, but I can mix it to make it work. This is one of the best foundations I've ever tried. It really is medium to full coverage. You can build it up easily and it just looks beautiful. It sits on the skin like a second skin and it really is transfer resistant. It's the first foundation I've tried where I can like touch my face even when I'm getting a little oily and none of it transfers onto my clothing, none of it transfers onto my coat, none of it gets on my hand. So I do love this foundation right now. It's about half full. I've used a lot of it. But this is my perfect shade match for the summer, um, and I can mix other foundations with it to make it work when I'm at my lightest right now during the winter. So I will definitely be holding on to this, and when I do run out, I am going to buy another one. Then I have the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Hydrating Tint Foundation. It really is just a, um, like a tinted moisturizer. I use this a lot during the summer when I, it's just too hot out to wear an actual foundation because you'll just sweat it straight off. I have the shade 40 Nude. This does have cool undertones to it, so when I do wear it, it looks a little bit off at first, but just the way it seeps into the skin, how moisturizing it is, how great it wears throughout the day, it just works really well for me during the summer. So I will be holding on to this. I really only use it during like July, August, maybe May because I do walk to work every day. So trying to find something that stays on my skin through the sweat, through the activity is a little bit hard. So this is one of those foundations I've found that really does that. Now the coverage on this is, isn't really there. It really just evens your skin tone. If you need something more full coverage, you either have to spot conceal or go in with another foundation on top of it in those trouble areas. Next I have two shades of the e.l.f. foundation. This is... I honestly forgot which one it is. They don't put their names for the products on the product. All it says is on the bottom the shade names, which is porcelain and sand. 
and I think I bought these before they like redid their shade name so this might not be the current porcelain but when I bought these I was right in between these two shades so I had to mix these two to make it work honestly I haven't used this in forever because the last time I remember wearing it I just remember it creasing like mad so I think I'm gonna stick this in like a maybe pile try it out tomorrow and see if it's something worth keeping around and if not I'm gonna go ahead and declutter it so I'll go ahead and update you in the description box whether or not I decided to hold on to this foundation Next, I have two foundations from The Ordinary, one I absolutely adore and one that I'm kind of still on the fence about. I have the Serum Foundation here on the left and the Coverage Foundation on the right. The Serum Foundation is beautiful. I have the shade 20N Neutral. It is super liquidy, but again, this is one that I love during the summer. It has a, a crazy amount of coverage for being a serum foundation. The shade is great for me and it lasts beautifully throughout the day. This one lasts throughout the day better than the coverage foundation. Now the coverage foundation is heavier, it looks a little bit more cakey upon the skin and it doesn't last throughout the day as well as the serum one. By the end of the day with the coverage foundation I saw some creasing, I saw a little bit of oil coming through. But with the serum foundation, I didn't see any of that. So I believe I'm going to go ahead and hold on to the serum foundation, which is about, it's about half full right now. I've been using it quite a lot. And then I'm going to go ahead and declutter the coverage foundation because I tried it for my first impression. If you haven't seen it, I'll throw it up in the cards. And then I tried it once or twice again, and then I never reached for it again. And I know I'm probably not going to reach for this one again. So best to just pass it along. Next in here, I have like a little sample. I'm not sure why I still have this because it's pretty much empty of the Dr. Jart Beauty Balm BB Cream with SPF 45. I do enjoy this, but I have another foundation here that's a lot cheaper than this and does practically the same thing. So I wouldn't go out and buy the full size of this. I need to go ahead and get rid of it because this is pretty much empty. Now, the BB cream that I find myself absolutely loving is the Perfect Cover BB Cream from Misha. I have to mix two shades just to get it to work for me. I mix the shades number 21 and 27. 27 is super, not orange, it's super warm yellow undertones. 21 is lighter, but the undertones are way too cool for me. So when I mix these two together, I actually get a great shade match and it feels moisturizing upon the skin it's great to use in the winter great to use in the fall it's it's got a it's got a great amount of coverage for being a bb cream but it also it feels it feels like i'm doing something good for my skin when i wear it so instead of the dr jart one that i did try out and didn't like as much i do hold on to these two but again this is more drugstore price so i had to mix the two shades together i got both of these off of amazon and I got free shipping and depending on when I bought these the price was anywhere between 10 and 15 dollars but I have seen this at Target so it is available at Target I'm not sure if you could use coupons on it but I would highly recommend this BB cream it's the only one that I've tried that I've really really enjoyed next please excuse the mess that is this cap it is impossible to keep this thing clean is the covergirl vitalist healthy elixir I love this foundation. If you haven't seen my first impression and review of it, I'll go ahead and throw it up in the cards. But I love this foundation. It's just a little bit dark for me now that I'm in the middle of winter and I'm at my lightest. But this is fantastic for the summer. This is fantastic for the spring. It's got SPF in it. It's got all these vitamins and minerals. And it lasts throughout the day beautifully. When I'm walking to and from work in like 95 degree weather and I'm running around all day at work, sometimes I'm on my feet for 10 hours a day. This lasts through all of it. I have the shade Buff Beige, which is 725. I really thought about getting another shade, but I didn't want to buy another shade just to use it, use it during the winter. So I am trying to mix this and find a good combination to lighten it during these lighter months because I, because I really want to use it during the winter too. So I'm going to hold on to this foundation. 
Next, I have the Healthy Foundation from Physicians Formula. I did a first impression on this as well. I'll go ahead and throw a link up. I really enjoyed this foundation, and I don't want to repeat myself too much because I did go over it in depth in that video, so I'll just go ahead and link that there. But I will be holding on to this. It's a great shade match for me right now, fairly light, and I do enjoy the formula a lot. So I'm going to hold on to this one. Next, I have another drugstore pick. This is the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless. I have the shade 122 Creamy Beige. Again, this was an, a surprising find. It's a drugstore foundation that by itself matches me pretty well. This is a really nice shade match for me. I enjoy the formula. Again, with a lot of drugstore foundations, I find that the issue is with creasing. This creases around my nose, around my eyes, and around my smile lines. So if I want to wear this on its own, I will add concealer to those areas and bake, and normally that takes care of the problem. But also, if I wear this for too long, it doesn't hold up too well. So the longest I can really wear this is 8 hours. After the 8 hour mark, it just starts to break down and make me look a lot older than I actually am. So whenever I have a short day or know that I don't have to be out for that long, I will reach for this one. A foundation that really underwhelmed me is from Revlon. It's the Color Stay for Normal to Dry Skin in the shade 180. First off, the shade was just really off no matter what I mixed it with, no matter what I tried. It wouldn't really match me that well. And also the found, like the formula itself, it looked cakey, which is strange. It looked cakey no matter how I applied it, no matter what powder I paired it with, no matter if I used a brush or a beauty blender. It just, I couldn't get it to not look like a cakey hot mess. So I've done it due diligence, I've tried my best, and it just hasn't worked for me. So I'm going to go ahead and let go of the Revlon. Oof, we actually made it to the end. The last two I have are from L'Oreal. It's the Infallible Pro Matte Foundation. Again, since it's drugstore, I do have to mix two of the shades together in order to get my shade match. And again, the issue I find with this one is that it looks great throughout the day, but I do get creasing along my smile lines. I don't know what it is about the drugstore formulas that just creases right there. Maybe it's my skin too, but, but it does keep me mad. I use this a lot more during the summer than I do the winter. For the winter, I could probably wear shade 101 by itself right now. I'm that light. But during the summer, I am closer to 102. So I mix in more of 102 and then like a drop of the 101 just to make my shade. So I will hold on to this one. Another one from L'Oreal I really want to try is the Pro Glow. Everyone has been raving about that one. So I might actually do the same and pick up 101 and 102 if they're the same in the Pro Glow formula. So these are all the foundations that I'm keeping. We did a great job. I cleared up this entire part of the drawer. I think I'm going to go ahead and move all these primers here. Maybe space out the foundations a little bit more down here. These are the two I'm keeping in my maybe pile. So I'm going to go ahead and move those to my everyday makeup drawer to try these out tomorrow. And then these are all the ones that I'm getting rid of. So I am keeping 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 foundations. I have two in my maybe and I'm getting rid of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 foundations. So it wasn't really like a cutthroat declutter but I am happy with where I ended up. I have a few foundations I'm saving for other seasons because I know my skin changes along with the weather, but I am happy to get rid of stuff that really hasn't been getting love and has just been taking up space in my collection. So I hope if you liked this kind of declutter video, you'll go ahead and give this video a thumbs up so I'll know for the future, and I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye!